Hello, my friends. It's Diane from Stamping with Diane in Innisfil, Ontario. I am back in my craft studio and I'm going to be showcasing a suite from our annual catalog, which started in May. I'll also be pairing it with some of our in colors. And today's project is going to feature the Zany Zoo stamp set and coordinating dies. This is part of the Zoo Crew Suite collection, which also comes with double sided 12 by 12 paper and two different colors of ribbon as well the lemon lime twist and the petal pink. Today's my project is not going to feature the paper. However, this paper just to note is black and white on one side and it's got the cute little critters on the other side. And some of the dies that come in the set will also cut out the creatures that are on the paper. So it makes for easy crafting. There's some great samples here, project ideas for you to follow. So let's get started. I am going to be using some of the paper from the Earthen Elegance Designer Series paper. Now this is very different than the Zany Zoo that I just showed you in the catalog, but here are the prints. So there's Moody Mauve, there's some of our new Pebbled Path, some of the Terracotta Tile, some of the Misty Moonlight, beautiful, beautiful patterns but they can pair with all kinds of different things. So I'm gonna be picking this Moody Mauve and I've decided to pair it with some of the Moody Mauve paper that comes in our 12, uh, six, six by six designer series paper of all of the different new in colors, the boho blue, the copper clay, the wheat, and of course the Moody Mauve. And I'm also going to use the Moody Mauve as our card base. So I'm starting with an eight and a half by 11, but this is going to be a fancy fold. So I'm gonna start with my score line at the four and a quarter using my scoring blade. I wanna go uh, from five and a half. So that's gonna cut, that's gonna give me my center fold. And now I'm gonna put this at the five and a half and I'm gonna cut across, but I'm not gonna cut the whole way because as I say, this is gonna be a fancy fold. So I'm cutting to my score line, my halfway point. Then I'm gonna to come to the other end and cut up a half an inch. So I'm at the, I'll move this up a little bit. I hope you can see that. I'm at the eight and a half and I'm gonna cut up a half an inch to the eight. I love our trimmer because it's got these little uh, slits on the side which allow you to line that up perfectly. Okay, and now I'm going to take that half inch. I'm lining it up on my half inch here and I'm going to cut up to the top. Get rid of that piece. I didn't quite get it. Grab my snips. Snip that across here. There we go. You could do this just with snips if you like. And then I want this piece, my extra piece, to be three and a quarter inches. So I'm going to take this edge that I just cut, go to the three and a quarter, and cut down to my five and a half. And again, I'm just gonna use my snips to cut that, to trim that off. And I'll just square that one up a little bit more. And now I'm gonna take my top piece here and I don't want this to be five and a half, I just want it to be five inches. So I'm gonna cut a half an inch off that top. So again, I, I love that we can use the opposite side. We've got, um, measurements on both sides of our cutter. So at the five, there we go. And now I'm gonna put another score line just slightly higher than this mark to allow that to fold in nicely. All right, so this is our card base. Now we're going to need two different DSPs I'll put this here in case you want to write these measurements down. So I've chosen this one from the Earth and Textures, 
and this one from the uh, in color designer series paper i thought they coordinated nicely and they're going to look lovely it's going to be kind of a tone on tone a little bit on this card so with two different papers we need to cut a three by four and three quarters and a four by five and a quarter of each of these okay so i'm going to bring my cutter in and do that all right, so you do need to be aware of your direction as these will be up and down or portrait uh, prints. So if they are directional, you wanna make sure your hearts are going the right way instead of uh, the wrong way. So I've got two of the larger size and two of the smaller size in the same prints. So let's go ahead and fold our card base so you can see how this is going to work. So here's our front. And then this one, I've scored it, remember I scored it slightly above, and that's so that it will easily fold over to the front of the card. Okay, so let's play with this and see. I think I want, this is going to sit underneath with the opposite print on top. Then as we open it up, this one will be inside and as we open once again this one will coordinate this way all right so then as the card is open you'll see the two different prints and we'll put an insert in here and then as i say this will come on here so as they lift the flap you're going to see the, the coordinating prints this way so I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this one on. A couple of these we don't need to do too much to. So I'm putting this top piece on the inside of the flap, allowing that Moody Mauve to pop on the outside. And then I don't need to do anything to this one either. So this is gonna go on my inside flap with the hearts facing the correct direction. Again, leaving a nice border. I'm gonna leave this insert because we'll stamp it before we adhere it. And I'll leave these front pieces as we're going to go ahead and decorate these now. That's gonna sit. Actually, I think we can go ahead and do, no, I'm gonna add something to that one. All right, let's bring in the dies so I can show you what we're going to be doing with those. So. This die set has all kinds of fun. It will cut out all the different creatures. It cuts out some cute um, curtains so we can have the dancers performing on stage. We've got balloons and trees and uh, a banner. So we are going to use the banner and we're going to stamp our ballerina. So we're gonna cut her out. And it also comes with this little edge and I'm going to cut a piece of this out on our boho blue and it's just going to add a little bit of trim so I'm adding a piece of washi tape onto that just to hold that in place and I'm actually going to run it through once and then I'm going to move this down and run it through twice so I'll hang on to that and let's go ahead and stamp our fun little ballerina so we have all of these different fun zany zoo creatures we can use and you could certainly pair this with any other stamp set to get uh, different sentiments this one has happy birthday uh, you're too wonderful something great to celebrate you but of course as with all of our stamps they coordinate well with other patterns as well and other sentiments so i've stamped that one and and as you can see, it's gonna coordinate really nicely. I'm gonna cut this out of our Moody Mauve. And as I said, I'm gonna cut this one out of here. So I'll run off and do that right now. So here's our little banner. Here's our little ballet dancer. And I wanted to show you what I did with this um, little wavy edge. I ran it through the die cut emboss machine once then I moved it down and ran it through a second time which just gives me a chance to get as long a piece of this wavy edge as I need 
So you can do that with our dies, just line them up and keep it going. So I'm just gonna trim this off and, uh, and we'll see what we're gonna do with that. Okay, so I just trimmed that down. You could actually use the other piece, the negative piece uh, for another project. So I'll just tuck that away. So I wanted to show you a little bit about uh, the coloring with my stamping blends. Now, here's a hint. I have not yet purchased the stamping blends in my new in colors. They are in my shopping cart, ready to do so, but you don't always have to use exactly the same colors. Uh, that every other things are going to coordinate nicely. So I've decided to make her skirt a nice bright pink. So I'm using one of this is actually one of the older polished pinks and uh, the lighter polished pink for her skirt. So I tend to just kind of use a little bit of a circular motion. I, I go to the edges first. If it's a larger surface, I use the wide end of my Stamping Blend marker. And, and then I just kind of come in and swirl, swirl around. And the more times you go over it, the more detail and the the darker you're going to get. So I decided I'd make her little dots this dark. This is the, um, excuse me, the Fresh Freesia still in our color selection. So this is the dark Fresh Freesia and I'm actually just kind of dotting those dots <laughs> with the wide tip end. And I'm going to come in with the light Fresh Freesia and give her a little bit of, uh, turn her into a pink. I don't even know what she is. I'm calling her a she just because of the skirt. I guess I shouldn't do that. Anyway, this is my ballerina. I don't know what zany zoo animal a ballerina is, but that doesn't matter. She's kind of cartoonish, so she can be whatever we want her to be. Oh, I think I'll give her some bright pink ballet shoes as well. Give that little bit there. Okay, I'm gonna make the face the light freesia as well. And then I'm gonna show you a little trick, a way to change that. Uh, change the tone. So the reason I did the dark colored dots first, because now I'm not worried if my light color goes over top, not a problem. Okay, now in order to make her face stand out a little bit, I'm gonna add on top of that, this is a light petal pink. So you might think it's not gonna show up, but it actually does change the color of the head there. So I just thought that made it pop a little bit. So there we go. There we've got our little ballerina. And the great thing about our stamping blends as well is there is the fine tip end and the brush tip end and it's easy to tell which is which by looking at the picture on the front there. And as I showed you, look at that now that it's sat for a minute, how her face does look a different color and I just like how it brightens it up a bit. All right, I've decided to use the happy birthday to you for this one. And I'm gonna stamp it in the boho blue on top of here. So let me just give it a quick test. Looks good. And we'll stamp straight down and straight up on the middle of this banner. There we go. And then we're getting ready now to put this together. But first I'd like to use our new punch. This is the two and three eighths inch punch. And I think I've got a piece that's going to slide in there. And this I think we're just going to use a bit of, of an as an accent on our card. So we've got all these pieces, we've got our insert, happy birthday to you. And let's go ahead and stamp an inside as well. 
It says something great to celebrate you. So let's do that. I think I might have done that too much. Nope, looks good. Okay, and we'll stamp that in the center. Something great to celebrate you. And this stamp set also has these cute little music notes and uh, extra little um, embellishments, I guess you might call them. So let's stamp a few of those as well. And I'll stamp them in the Moody Mauve, but I wanna stamp off, so I'm gonna stamp it here and then here just to make it a little bit lighter. There we go. That just adds a little fun detail to the inside of the card. Okay, let's get ready to assemble this one. So we can put our insert in first. We'll go ahead and do that I'm using the stamp and seal. I just tend to do some in the corners and across the center. And I'm trying to line it up as carefully as I can with the other piece that we've already put in. So it looks uniform across here. That's nice. Now, if you wanted to, you could cut out another zany zoo creature and put them on the inside. This, remember, is gonna be coming in like so. And then we're going to put our dancer our happy birthday to you. But I wondered if maybe she would pop a bit more if we put her on this. So let's use some of the, um, these extra little swirls that I mentioned. So you can see how those are going to look. And let's use some of them in the Fresh Freesia and maybe that Boho Blue. Boho blue. And clean that off and some of the fresh freesia. Tilt the stamp. And the reason I'm doing the fresh freesia is just to pop her outfit. Cute, yes, I like it. Put those away so I don't run my hand through them. Okay, so she's gonna sit on here and I think we'll pop her with some dimensionals and we'll pop the happy birthday to you with some dimensionals. But I'll put the circle on just flat. So I've got a couple of large dimensionals and I'll put a couple of small ones down in the corner. That's the nice thing about our dimensionals is they're different sizes but they are all the same height. So they will all pop up the same amount. It won't be an awkward uneven surface on your card. So that's going to go like that. Pop our little dancer on here. And then remember we cut out this. So I'm thinking I would like it to show just down this side to add a little bit more color there. What do you think? And I think we're just gonna do it down the one side. Okay, so I can go ahead and we can add this to our card front. So this is kind of a, a unique fun fold. It's not difficult, but it does, you can't get two out of one uh, piece of card stock because, because of the way we cut it all as one piece. But I do like this design because it uh, it won't come out. It's, it's nice and sturdy there. It's solid. It's 
it's not something we had it to add in. Okay, so we can either put it right on the card front like so, which I think is what I'm gonna do. I think we're gonna adhere this right to the card front so it will stay put, yes. So the best method for that, let's get the tear and tape out. So tear and tape is just like it suggests, it comes in a roll. Oh, it's a little bit wide. Okay, I'm gonna use my glue dots instead. That's the thing with stamping up. We have a tool for everything. And so if one, if plan A doesn't work, look for a plan B. I love our glue dots because I'm not sure if you can see there, I'm actually stretching the dot. I don't really need it as a dot. I'm making it more like a line. They're very malleable. There we go. And now I want to line it up here at the top. I'm going to press this down so I can see how far. I've got it nice and even. Now I'll take my paper snips. Where did they go? There they are. Snip across to make this even. Not quite even. Snip a wee bit more. There. And I like how that just pulls a little bit of the blue. Now we do have twines as well that come in all of these in colors. So do we like the look of a little bit of blue twine in underneath here? I'm thinking yes. How about just a little bit of Yeah, let's do it. So I'm just going to cut a little bit of our blue twine. If it's too twirly, just take your finger and your thumb and pull it through. I don't mind it a bit twirly though, because I want it to look a little bit like a bow, a cheater bow. Down and back. You just kind of wrap it three times. One, two, three. So I've got one, two, three ends. And Yeah, that'll work well. So I'm gonna just stick a glue dot in underneath here. I'm using my take your pick tool. I'm just gonna pop that glue dot in underneath. Whoop. Wrap my twine, one, two, three. Kind of center it out a bit. And then literally slide it in and under. And there we go. <laughs> She's so cute. Okay, so this is the earthen textures along with the designer series paper that comes in the in colors. This is the Modi, Moody Moo, Mauve. <laughs> We open it up and we've got this inside. We could certainly stamp some more or add another character in there. Let me show you another couple of cards that I've created using the same combination of the earthen uh, textures. This one is all earthen textures paper. And I use this cute little raccoon carrying the balloons and I put a little bit of the um, uh, crystal effects on the balloons. I also added some of the in color, what are they called? In color dots. And these trees are also cutouts from the Zany Zoo. So this one, I put the trim down at the bottom, which I like that look as well. Again, you get the unified look in here. And like so. And then I also did one with the cute little turtle singing. And I decided to say that one is You're Too Wonderful. And again, I put the trim across the bottom just for fun and another happy birthday on the inside. Okay, so I hope you like those designs, similar, all using the Zany Zoo. 
but uh, but a little bit different. Okay, oh, I didn't put any bling on this one. I might add in a little bit of our blue bling. You can check in later and, well, let's do it. Let's do it right now. A little bit of a blue bling on here. Yeah, let's do it. So again, I'm using the take your pick. I'm gonna twist it to the other side, which is the, the palette end. Picks up those gems a little bit more easily on a flat surface anyway. And sometimes I just actually slide it to where I want it in place. So let's put a larger one down here. These are nice and sticky. And let's put a smaller one here. Oh, where'd he go? There he is. And we'll put the, these come in three different sizes, so that works out quite well. Put the leather one up here. Or should we put it on there? No, I'll put it up here. And there you have it. Okay, so three cute cards made with the Zany Zoo. Have a great day, everybody. Let me know if you need the Christmas catalog. I should have them very shortly and can get one for you. Take care, friends. Bye for now.